Okay, welcome to Devil's Postpile National Monument. One of the premier examples, gosh, in the world, I suppose, of columnar jointing. And in this case, the columns are in basalt, a very dense basalt, which we'll look at here in a second. Thanks for joining me, geology professor Sean Wilsey here at Devil's Postpile. First time here. Um, pretty impressive. Hard to get to place. It's a circuitous long road uh, that's only open seasonally to get in here. Uh, there's a stream behind us you might hear that's I think one of the forks of the San Joaquin River. And so Devil's Post Pile has a story similar to other places where we've seen columnar jointing and that is we have this lava flow here, this 82,000 year old basaltic lava flow uh, that ponded up against some obstruction and then cooled and solidified very slowly. We'll talk more about that story in a second. We can see that mainly above us here, we've got these 40, 50, maybe 60 foot columns that are more or less vertical and perfectly formed. And in a, in a bit, we'll head up to the top of the columns because there's a special surprise up on top. And then as we look over here towards the, I guess the the north side or the left side of the columns, we see that some of those columns start to curve and deviate from uh, that perfect vertical orientation. And then right in front of us here, we have this talus slope, this big uh, field of boulders, all of which are these columns um, in various shapes and sizes. And these provide a nice opportunity to look at the rock type up closely. And so we can see that it's a pretty dense basalt, not a lot of vesicles. In fact, I'm really not seeing any vesicles. So that tells us that by the time the lava made it to this point, it had lost much of its gas content. So a lot of the gases had uh, dissolved out of the magma. We can also see some crystals in here, these white specks of feldspar, plagioclase feldspar, some of which form like this one I'm pointing at, Nice little rectangles in uh, the, the rock. Here's another one right here. And these are shiny in the sunlight today because plagioclase feldspar has two perfect cleavage planes at 90 degrees. So not only are they shiny, letting us know uh, that it has uh, cleavage planes, these minerals have cleavage planes, but the 90 degrees lets us know, the 290 de or the 90 degree angle of those two planes forms these nice little rectangles or square blocky shapes in the rock. Um, so looking down at this talus slope. Of course, the process that would be dominant here for producing all of these blocks in the foreground would be the frost wedging that takes place. This is a very uh, high altitude, about probably about 8,000 feet area of the Sierras. And so all the freeze thaw cycles in these fractures, these perfectly formed fractures, that wedging in the when the ice forms eventually destabilizes the columns and they collapse and then accumulate here uh, on the slope below um, so pretty nice we get a nice view of the columns this one shows nicely in um, in its cross-sectional view it has one two three four so this is a five-sided, a pentagon. Uh, a lot of them will be hexagons, and in a perfect world, they'd all be hexagons. I think we can get a better view of the cross-sectional view of some of the columns, though, from the top. So let's head up top and get a nice surprise at the top, get a nice view of the columns from uh, the top view, and then talk a little bit about uh, how this thing might have formed and why we might have these curved columns here off on the side. Okay, here we are at the top of Devil's Post Pile, looking down on the talus pile. Uh, the cliffs are just below me here. You can see a few of the pillars kind of sticking out over the edge and the cliff edge just beyond this little bush here. I pick out some of the tourists there. Um, but a great view looking across the canyon as well to uh, the Sierra Granites here. And if you know anything about the high country of the Sierra, you know that a major uh, agent of erosion in the past, not so much today, 
uh, is glaciers. And so these rounded knobs we see in the granitic rocks across the valley were all sculpted by glaciers. Obviously get into high country around Yosemite. You see great evidence of that. And here on top of Devil's Post Pile, uh, we see the same thing. So as we come up here to the tops of these columns, you can see some of the really well-preserved polish and the striations running across the surface of these hexagonal uh, columns here. Just super, super slippery. In fact, I almost slipped on one earlier. Um, but you can see that these striations show the direction that the glaciers moved, which would be off to the right or down the valley here. And as we look at the tops of these, we can see that, again, some of them are not so perfectly hexagonal, but generally hexagonal in shape. So as these lavas cool and crystallize, they're contracting. And so um, around each point, you're going to end up with a 120 degree angle. So you end up with one here, one here, and one here. And if you do that on each side, you end up with a, uh, a hexagon. Here's one here that's uh, nearly a perfect hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they range from pentagons to hexagons to even septagons or seven-sided uh, polygons in some places. And so that's one of the nice things about coming up on top is you can see um, the glacial striations and just how perfectly it sheared off the top of the columns here at the top of Devil's Post Pile. We mentioned that we talk about um, the curved uh, columns that we can't see anymore now, but they're down out of view and just below us on the right. Um, for In order to have vertical columns, you would have cooling at the bottom and the top, which makes sense. If you have a horizontal lava flow, um, cooling at the bottom where it's in contact with the ground, cooling at the top, then you end up with nice vertical columns like we see most of the time at Devil's Post Pile. But you can get uh, angled columns or even horizontal columns if you have the cooling surfaces perpendicular to those. So the idea with those curved columns would be that the, that the lava was ponded against some obstruction. Um, now up here in the high country with the glaciers, you think it might be ice, but it turns out the age of this lava at 82,000 years coincides with a interglacial period when the glaciers were not large, weren't down this far. And so it's possible that there was just maybe an old glacier moraine or some other topographic obstruction, uh, part of the canyon, the walls of the canyon that the lava pushed up and ponded up against because these Lavas here at the Devil's Post Pile are in some places up to 400 feet thick, which is pretty impressive. And the fact that we see these so uniformly spaced suggests that they were um, that they were cooling quite slowly. And so they had lost a lot of the gas. They'd moved a couple miles from their vent. And so this was the place they finally stopped and cooled and solidified. So pretty remarkable and just beautiful, exquisite columns here that we find at the top. These just perfect hexagons. Almost looks like a mosaic floor. It's my foot for scale. So, at any rate, I uh, hope you enjoyed this little adventure here to Devil's Post Pile National Monument. Thanks for joining me, geology professor Sean Wilsey, on this little adventure. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to donate, there's the thanks button at the bottom of the viewer on YouTube, or there's a donate button or PayPal link under the video description. So thanks so much for uh, your support of these geologic education videos, and we'll see you from the next stop.